First question is from Jordan Lacey. Should I be changing my lifting tempo every time I phase into a new workout regimen? I, I like this conversation because tempo is one of the most underrated ways of changing a stimulus from lifting weights. Agreed. It's, it's one that nobody looks at. You know, they mm. look at, you know, reps uh, is common. How many sets you do is common. Changing the exercises is common. Um Changing form, less common, but still more common than tempo. I almost hear nobody ever talk about phasing with, with tempo, but I'll tell you something. You do an exercise explosively or you do it slow and controlled. Completely it different. Almost changes Stimulus. the exercise totally, yeah. completely, you know? And it's one thing that I've always gotten uh, results from. I I'll take an exercise and maybe I don't want to phase out of the reps necessarily mm -hmm. <clears throat> or the exercise. So I'll just say to myself, that, you know, today I'm going to squat and instead of, you know, explosively driving up, I'm going to consciously take five seconds to go down and go up. Feels completely different. So I, I love this idea and I think it's a great strategy. Um, personally, I use it very similar to what we were just talking about in the intro with like hit. And but the, the way I do it, it's not a time thing on this situation. It's kind of like a mood how I'm feeling. Right. So. Some days I'm going into a workout. I'm sure you guys can relate to this, and I feel powerful. I was I'm well fed. I'm well rested. Oh, yeah. I'm powerful. And uh, my my training has been consistent. And the last few times I've trained, I may have seen you know some mm -hmm. incre increases consistently. And I'm like, I want to test my power. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna do a more explosive type of lift where it's like a one one type one 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 type of tempo, mm -hmm. and just see what because I feel good. And then there's other times when I just feel achy and I'm tired, maybe I'm wore down a little bit and trying to be explosive or lift like max load. I just, I'm not feeling that today. So I'm going to manipulate my tempo and do a very slow, controlled, lighter weight. So I love to use it like also like hit as now, again, this is a you know, experienced lifter understanding how this is a tool in my tool belt and, and, and trying to work it in my everyday life. I think if I'm advising somebody who is learning how to program, learning how to train, this is uh, probably one of the smartest strategies is, you know, pick it, you change your phase. Now you should also change your tempo and pay attention to the results from that. Be consistent with it, measure it. But as you become more and more advanced and understand how to manipulate all these, all these uh, variables, uh, I think this is another great way to day by day, pay attention to how you feel mm -hmm. and and utilize this this uh, tool differently. Well, this was one thing that I thought was outlined uh, somewhat smart in like NASM and their whole pyramid of, uh, you know, phasing of st the stability phase, the strength phase, working your way up the ladder towards the power phase. And so if you're looking at it just specifically from a tempo perspective, I tended to utilize that concept when I would have somebody brand new. We're really slow. And a lot of times I'm just doing isometric exercises so they can really like great point deeply connect uh, and, and feel how they're, what, you know, where their body is in space and like which muscles are actively involved, which ones like need to respond and aren't responding. And so we can really, uh, you know, take the time to assess what's happening and, and pay attention, graduate them to a different tempo where now we're working a little bit more on strength. The rest period's a, a bit longer, but now we're actually like, mm. you know, promoting a little more aggressive, you know, uh, tempo and then working our way up towards this explosive, like, boom, we have to move quickly and, and moving quickly needs a really solid foundation to be applied properly. Excellent point because, uh, I, I I want to I want to uh, you know get into that a little deeper. Uh, slow tempo doesn't require as much stability and control as explosive uh, tempo. So mm -hmm. if you are not advanced, or let's say you do an exercise and you have a tough time feeling your target muscles, or you have a tough time really yielding the results you're looking for from a movement. So let's say you do squats and you, and you notice, let's say you're, uh, you're somebody wants to build your butt doing squats and you're not really hitting the butt, you don't feel it in the glutes, it's not really responding, you're better off going slow and connecting than you are going explosive and fast. So there is a totally different feel, and the prerequisites are different. And I will say this, when I would train clients, uh, more often than not, not all the time, but more often than not, I would focus more on a slower controlled tempo because it just doesn't require 
nearly as much skill and control. No, mm-hmm. I, I, Justin, that's a great point. And th- that's where like who we're talking to matters how I right. advise. Yeah, absolutely. The questions being asked, would I tr- change? I think that's a great, uh, you know, just straight up for most people, that's a good strategy. You move into a new phase, you change the tempo along with whatever exercises or rep ranges that you're changing. I think that's a smart, that's a smart idea. But to Justin's point, how I coach clients, very similar. Most people, I did not mess with uh, explosive type tempos until way later in their training. Until we've been training for a long time, they have very good body control Mm -hmm. and they have very good form and technique. Now we can play with that more regularly because they have that type of control and understanding of what we're trying to accomplish. More risk and also, you know, more reward. At that point, you've built the foundation of it. So yeah, your body really responds uh, during the power phase and you get a lot of the benefits from it, but you just got to make sure that, you know, you don't do any damage leading up to it. Yeah. Before you can go fast, you've got to be able to do it perfectly going slow. That's what I would say.